know how to solve an exponential equation algebraically by trying to find common bases and therefore making those exponents equivalent to one another and solving for the value of the variable. If we couldn't do that, we could graph it and get that point of intersection. You're now going to be able to use logarithms to solve for the value of an exponent that is not necessarily a whole number. Remember Algebra 101, we can do anything to one side of the equation as long as we do the same thing to the other side. Like most things in mathematics, there's a process that we're going to follow when we're trying to solve an algebraic equation. Okay, so the first thing we do, whether it's exponential or logarithmic, is we're going to try to isolate the power. That is crucial and it's the number one thing people forget. So do not forget, we have to get that power isolated first. So because I'm multiplying by 5,000, I'm going to do the opposite, which is division. So the first thing we need to do is divide out that 5,000 to get the power by itself. And again, remember what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. You're going to grab your calculator and in your calculator, you're going to keep that value of 1.0406, etc. That is equal to 1.01. I'm going to now combine the next two steps together. So I'm going to take the common logarithm of both sides. I'm also going to use a log law to simplify this. And the log law we want to use is the one where we can take this exponent and move it down in front and then take the log. So we're going to take the log of that value in your calculator. So I'm just going to leave that whole thing in there. This exponent comes down and we're going to multiply it by the common log of that 1.01. Now, our goal in algebra always is to isolate the variable. So we want to get that n by itself. We can see that we have n times the log of 101. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So what I can do is divide out that log of, of 1.01 on that side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side to keep it balanced. And when I do this, I know that the log of 1.01 divided by the log of 1.01 is just 1. And that's going to leave me with that 1n. So in your calculator, you're going to take the log and then you're going to put second function answer to get that whole value in there. Divide that by the log of 1.01 and you can get your solution. I did on the first one want to go through the calculator steps of how you would enter this. So the first thing we do is isolate that power. So we're going to divide out that 5,000. Now when you get down here, we need to take the logarithm of that whole value. So we're going to press log and then we're going to go second function and then press the negative key. It says answer above there. It's going to take this whole value and substitute that in there. Now we do have to close the bracket. So we're going to close the bracket. We're going to divide that by the logarithm of 1.01. And we're going to get that 3.9, etc. So that's what our solution is. And then always in algebra, you verify by substituting it back in. So if this is what we think the answer is, so you can see I've got that written down there. We're going to press store. So we're going to store that as the variable. And so every time we press that variable key, it's going to put this whole value in there, even the digits we can't see that come after. And then we're going to substitute in uh, the left side and the right side. Because the left side is just one number, I don't need to worry about that. But I'm going to put this in exactly the way I see it. So we're going to have that 5,000 and then bracket 1.01, close the bracket, to the power of the variable. And you're checking, do you end up with the same value as we have on the other side of the equation? If you do, you know you did it correctly. All right, step one, isolate the power. This power happens to be isolated already. I'm going to use the log law at the same time that I take the common log of both sides. So we're going to move the exponent down front and then we're going to take the log of both sides because I can type that into my calculator. My goal in algebra always is to isolate the variable. I want to get that x by itself. So I'm going to divide out the log of four and then what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. Now, here's what I want you to realize. Log 12 divided by log four is not the same as log three. This is the exponent on base 10 that gives us the value of 12 divided by the exponent on base 10 that gives us the value of 4. And you can even try this. If you put log 3 into your calculator, you are not going to get the same value as what we should have. And then you're always going to verify this. This answer here, we're going to store it as the variable 
and then we're going to enter this into our calculator. So we're going to go 4 to the power of that variable, and we should get 12. If we do, you know this is the correct answer. If you don't, there's a mistake somewhere that you need to go back and try to fix. I would like you to try the next example. So can you please pause the video, grab some paper, go through those steps, and see if you can solve this one algebraically. Okay, step one, we need to isolate the power. Here's my power. I need to get rid of that 500 by dividing it out. So I'm gonna divide out 500 on both sides. When I do the next two steps, remember we're gonna combine them. So we're gonna take the common log of both sides, and I'm also gonna take this exponent and I'm going to move it down in front. Now my goal is to isolate the variable. So here's the variable, but it's part of this fraction. So I'm going to divide out the log of one half on both sides to get that 19 over h isolated. In my calculator, I entered the log of 13 divided by 500, I closed the bracket, and I divided by the log of 0 0.5 or 1 divided by 2, and you can see that we get this 5.26. So we're going to keep that number in our calculator, and that's now equal to that 19 over h. Now, one thing you could do is remember that this here has a denominator of 1. So if we think about how to solve a proportion, I can cross multiply. So I know that 19 times 1 is 19, and we're going to divide it by, and I'm going to press that second function answer because I want that whole value in there, and that's the value of h. So we think h is equal to 3.6, etc. And again, we have to verify this. So we're going to store this as the variable and press enter. And so I'm going to type in the right-hand side exactly as it originally was in the question. I'm just going to go 0 0.5 instead of 1 half. You could go 1 divided by 2 if you wanted to. We're going to go to the power of, now most of you will need to put this in brackets. So we're going to go 19, we're going to divide that by the variable, you're going to close the bracket, we're looking for a solution of 13, and you got it. So you know h is 3.6. This is our second last example. I'd like you to give that one a go. So pause the video and try this, and then I'm going to come back and give you some pointers on how you could do one that has variables on both sides. The power is already isolated, so step one is done. I'm going to then bring my exponent out front and take the common log of both sides. When I put this in my calculator, the log of seven, close the bracket, divided by the log of three gives us that 1.77 value. And then we need to get the x isolated. I need to bring this piece to zero by subtracting two. So when we subtract two from both sides, we end up with a negative value for x. Now you know that's okay because when you substitute it back in and verify, you do end up with a value of seven. And that brings us to our final algebraic example. I'm going to isolate the power, and it's already isolated, so we're good there. I'm going to move the exponent out front, move the exponent out front, and I'm going to take the common log of both sides. Now, this is different than the example we just did. When we did that with this one, all we were left with was this 1x. In this particular example, we have x's on both sides. I need to get them all onto one side. To get all of the variables onto one side, I need to remove the those brackets by distributing so that I can move those pieces over. So I'm going to take the log of 3 and I'm going to multiply it by each term in the bracket. I'm going to take the log of 5, I'm going to multiply it by each term in the bracket. Once we do that, you can see we've got x times the log of 3. I don't need to write that 1 down, I just did. And we've got 2x times the log of 5 and that negative 3 times the log of 5. Okay, so now these two terms contain a variable. These two terms do not contain a variable. All the variables go to one side. All of the terms with no variable go to the other side. And it doesn't matter which way we go. Um, this is my larger coefficient, so maybe I'll just move my variables to that side, and then I'm going to move my other pieces over. All right, so we're getting here. So now my variables, my terms with the variables are on that side. My terms without the variables are on that side. Because I have a variable in each of these terms, I'm going to factor out that variable. So I'm going to write this left-hand side down as is, but I'm going to factor an x out, giving me 2 log 5 minus log 3, and then the left side will stay the same. Okay, you can see here is my variable. I need to get that by itself. 
Right now I'm multiplying this x by everything in brackets. So I need to divide out everything in brackets in order to get x by itself. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And on the right hand side, when I divide this out, that is gonna give me a value of one, leaving me with x, which is what we want. And then when you go to put this side in your calculator, you're going to have to make sure that you put the numerator in brackets. So you're gonna do bracket log three, a bracket will pop up, you have to close the bracket. Plus three log, a bracket will pop up, close the bracket on the five, and then close the bracket on the numerator. So you're gonna have two brackets here. Or you can press equals after you enter that whole piece. Now you have to remember to put a bracket on the denominator. You're gonna have two log, a bracket is gonna pop up, you have to close the bracket. Minus log, a bracket's gonna pop up, you have to close the bracket, and then you're gonna have a final closing bracket on the denominator should have got 2.795 etc. Make sure that you press equals after the whole numerator or put that whole piece in brackets and then you have to tell the calculator that we need to divide by this entire value. So bracket at the start of the denominator and then you're going to have a double bracket there at the end. There's one last thing that could come in useful for you. So we know that y is the exponent on base b that gives us the value of x. So y is the exponent on base b that gives us the value of x. Using what we know about log laws combined with taking the common log of each side, I'm going to move the y down, I'm gonna take the log of the left side, and I'm gonna take the log of the right side to keep it balanced. Now let's say that my goal is to isolate the variable y. I can do that by dividing out the log of base b, or the log of b, on both sides. And then the log of b divided by the log of b is one, so I'm left just with this one y. And then on the other side, I have the log of x divided by the log of b. I now have two common logarithms that I can just press that button on my calculator and get a value. I may not have an exponent that is a whole number that goes on this base to get this value. So what we can do is change it into this format where we've just algebraically rearranged it and now I can type this in using that common log to get a specific value. And this is what we refer to as the change of base formula. I may not know an exponent that goes on this base that gives me this value, but I can take the logarithm of the argument, divide it by the logarithm of the base, and get the exponent that way. So for example, I don't know the exponent that goes on five that gives me 45. It's not gonna be a whole number. But I can say, okay, let's take the log of the argument and let's divide it by the log of the base. Okay, so I pulled up the calculator here, just so we can see this. The log of 45, close the bracket, divided by the log of five, gives us that 2.36, etc. So this means the exponent on five that gives me 45 is two and a little bit. And that makes sense. Five squared is 25, too small. Five cubed is 125, too big. So somewhere between two and three, this is the exponent on five to give a value of 45. So any time, we do not know the exponent on a base to get that value, we can always go to the change of base. The log of the argument divided by the log of the base. And just remember, close that bracket in the calculator and then check, is four to the power of four and a little bit gonna give me that value? There's two ways you could approach this one. We could either just leave the three out front, take the log of the argument, divide by the log of the base, as we've shown here. Or if you wanna move that three up to the position of the exponent on the 512, you can just take the log of 512 cubed, divide that by the log of seven. In both cases, you're going to get the same value.